every piece of communication told you why that company was awesome and they were the best and they were going to solve all your problems and they are the hero of their story. And I did not trust them, nor did I want to listen to them anymore. It was, it was one of those things I'm like, they probably spent half a million dollars on that commercial. And it was a complete waste of time and money because I did not like them at the end of it. I didn't want what they had. I didn't care what they had. I just knew that they thought they were awesome and that was it. Welcome to CEOs on Video, the show to help you go from being the head of your business to the face and voice of your brand. If you're a CEO, a business owner, an entrepreneur who is involved in bringing a new business for your company, then you need to be putting out content. You are the subject matter expert in your business, and there's no one who can market it better than you can. In this show, I interview experts who are killing it online, using video, using digital media to grow their business, and we're going to show you how you can be doing the same. We all know that by this point, social media is an important part of standing out online. We, we know that the internet plays a key piece in how we communicate with customers, potential customers, and the world at large. But something that is still a mystery for a lot of us is how to tell a story. Donald Miller calls storytelling the universal language, and it's one of the best ways that we can communicate in a way that we can actually be understood. I am here with Jonathan Mills, who is, he has an emphatic focus on storytelling and how to communicate in a cinematic, compelling way, and really to help humanize brands and organizations. This is increasingly important because it's not enough to just communicate what you do or how you do it but why you do it. And story is an excellent way to do that. So Jonathan, thank you for coming on and I'm excited to dig into it. Yeah, appreciate being on here. This is a really fun opportunity. <laughs> awesome. So we hear storytelling in the, you know, in the film and video world thrown around a lot. In the marketing world, it gets kind of labeled on to things, but most are still kind of bad at it. So how, how do you actually go about <laughs> telling a story in a way that is focused on actual customers in a way that actually resonates? How do you? Approach? Yeah. You know, it's interesting. The other, you know, you mentioned Donald Miller and the story branding thing. And I love his content, his, his just general ideas, everything. in and the fact that he's got a list of clientele base, that's everybody knows. Everybody knows the, the, the groups and organizations and companies that he's personally help, um, which says a lot, social proof, which is kind of where the story thing goes. One of the things that as I've really tried to develop my storytelling skills and hone them in the world of marketing and, uh, you know, that, that type of thing is understanding the clearest, most basic communi point of communication. You know, so I'll, I'll have a client that, that I meet with and they come to me and they're like, okay, so we are this gym that sells hair care products. And we also have a clothing line that goes to our real estate company. And we, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I'm not kidding. Like I've literally had conversations that were so similar to that where I'm like, okay, these are all cool. Everybody loves these things. <laughs> now let's pare it down and let's get one sentence that says we are this. And I think that gets missed all the time. Um, people are really, really like not very good at taking the big picture and boiling it down into a simple statement that can be that can be translated in all their communication. So that's one of the things that I, I really like to do is, is is take everybody's spaghetti identity and we comb it out and we say, this is this is you. This is not you. This is you. This is not you. And now we're going to tell everybody who you are which, you know, inspires trust. It inspires loyalty because everybody's able to say, oh, this company does this and I need this. So I'm going to talk to this company. It's, it's really, really simple. Um, and it, at the same time, it's really hard. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I think a lot, I mean, that's a problem. I think every person faces, not, not just businesses, but it gets messier when you have a business that does a bunch of different things where it can be hard to wrap their minds around like, well, how we don't do just one thing. 
But when you're trying to communicate it clearly to someone, you need to boil it down to that singular thing for that person. Like you can have five of those different one things, but it has to be for the right person because then it's clear when they are reading it. And I think we, we, yeah, I was going to say that you said the right person and that's huge. People are trying to get everybody in their, in their, you know, mailing list and everybody on their social media platform but like their message isn't for everybody. <laughs> I think people are so scared of, of losing out on opportunity that they don't actually talk to their audience and they don't communicate and find their people. So that's another yeah. part I, of that process too. I think the, the example that almost everyone has seen at some point, you go to a networking event or a, a mixer or a business after hours or something, you walk in and they have the format. Everyone introduces themselves and they've got their 60 seconds or something. They say what they do. And there's always that guy or that girl that has like, well, I'm a dog walker and I'm a graphic designer. And on the wedding, uh, I do weddings on the weekend and you can hire me to, you know, to cut your hair. And like, by the end, you're like, I have no idea what that person does. I have no clue only that they're probably too busy or they they need to just like pick one and run with it because i have no idea what they do and businesses do that a ton here's all the stuff and you know what how can we help you what do you want to buy and like i don't know because i'm overwhelmed and i'm confused and i don't know what i should be coming to you for another element of this whole thing and donald miller talks about this a lot is not being the hero as the company as the organization as the entity you are not the hero your person that you're trying to bring into your sphere of influence is the hero and you're just the one that lights the path that guides them into this you know so that they can be what they're supposed to be there's that you know they can be who they're supposed to be i saw a commercial like a major commercial a few weeks ago and I, I my wife and i were sitting there next next to each other watching this she's not a filmmaker she's super creative and all that but i looked at her i was like that was literally the worst commercial i have ever seen and she's like no, that's a that's an aggressive position to take on that i suppose <laughs> but like you know tell me more about that and i said every piece of communication told you why that company was awesome and they were the best and they were going to solve all your problems and they are the hero of their story and i did not trust them nor did i want to listen to them anymore it was it was one of those things i'm like they probably spent half a million dollars on that commercial and it was a complete waste of time and money because i did not like them at the end of it i didn't want what they had i didn't care what they had I just knew that they thought they were awesome and that was it. So I'm not going to say what company it was, but I was like, <laughs> dude, you need to get somebody yeah. else in your marketing team to tell your story because I do not like you anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, nobody likes the person who only focuses on themselves. I think mm -hmm. that, I think sometimes we can get it confused when we talk about, you know, putting stuff out online of you need to let people get to know you, but it can't be all about you. Should you share some personal stuff? Sure. Uh, you know, personal, if you're a small organization where you, it's very you know, personal because you have a team of three people. So you're sharing more intimate personal details. Mm -hmm. Or if you're a, you know, a smaller organization, you know, of, let's say, you know, one to $5 million company, you can, share some internal stuff that might be appealing, but it can't be just that. Right. Like you pop onto, you know, LinkedIn or on any platform and it's just self aggrandizing <laughs> promotional. Like it doesn't, there's zero substance to it. There's yeah. nothing, very few people, very few companies putting something out with the intent of like, this is to help someone else. Right. This is to help them understand which the funny thing is when you focus on the customer about providing value to them, the whole point is to attract better customers, to mm -hmm. educate prospects, to become better customers. It's just the short sighted play if they want to see their value in conversions and immediate ROI and the return on ad spend and 
all the things that marketing agencies tell them to value. And right. they, it's hard to quantify people's feelings about you. And it's a long game. Like you said, it's not this fly by night, you know, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am deal. Like right. you, that's part of humanizing the organization is establishing trust over time. And, and that doesn't happen because they saw one ad that doesn't happen because they saw a photo on your Instagram account. It's not what that's not when that happens. It happens whenever you you uh, show that person that, you know, is, is is in your funnel. They are your person. They resonate with your message, with your your idea, you, you know, every whatever you're bringing to the market, they resonate with that. And they don't and, and they know that consistently I'm going to keep returning to this source because I just got what I needed. I got what I wanted. And, and I didn't feel sleazed or, or slimy at the end of it um, because they really helped. You know, one of the things that like organizations I've worked, I, I work with nonprofits um, fairly regularly. And I think that nonprofits often have great stories and rarely um, understand that communicating their story clearly is valuable. And whether you, here's, here's the mis, I think nonprofit is a misnomer because they make lots of money. There's a lot of money that, that runs through a nonprofit and it has to, it's important yeah. because whatever their goal, mission, blah, 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 it requires money. And so therefore the thing they're selling is their story. And, you know, one, one organization I worked with um, is an anti-human trafficking organization. They, they take. Um, women, children who have been trafficked off, you know, they, they work with police um, and law enforcement and stuff to get them out of that dangerous situation. They spend like several years rehabilitating them, bringing them back into society because the trauma that they've gone through, all that stuff, like they're, they're on the front lines of ending human trafficking. So here's the thing, everybody with a ounce of blood in their heart is going to be like, yes, we love that, you know, in human trafficking, this is modern day slavery, that type of thing. But they were not able to, they were, they were living on like zero dollars. They were, they had already successfully rehabilitated and, and rescued dozens of women out of trafficking situations. Um, and nobody even knew about them, like no clue. And this is one of those organizations that like people want to give to, they want to be involved with. And so they brought me on and, and I, man, I got one of the first rescuees on front in front of the camera and I just let her talk. I asked questions. Um, I let her share her story. She, she tell, I mean, it was, it's tear jerking, heart wrenching and pot, you know, like, again, I, I cut out the, the real graphic hard, really hard stuff to, to hear, but I was able to pull her, her story out. They communicated it very clearly, you know, what this organization did for her and now what they are and what she's involved with helping them do further on. And that video was shown in, in a gala, just, just probably, uh, uh, I think two months after the final cut was, was delivered, they raised $150,000 at that gala. Whereas before they'd never even had a budget in the, like the $30,000 range, you know, like, you know, there was, that was like their annual budget was like 30 grand <laughs> for this organization. Right. And they spent one, they took one night, they showed this, this commercial and they made six figures in a matter of one hour. And, and it wasn't because their organization all of a sudden became better. It wasn't because their organization like did something new is because their message was clear and what they did and how they did it was presented in a really clear fashion. So it's just an example, you know, like you got to humanize this. This can't be this faceless entity. This story matters and it's real. And this is how you can help this situation. So, I mean, a lot of things without having seen that video, just hearing you describe it there, I mean, a couple of things very obviously were done amazingly well of you didn't go in and lead with stats and figures of, you know, X percentage of adults, you know, will, you know, like, or some 
10,000 adults in America every year are trafficked or, you know, like that's, mm-hmm. it's so hard to connect. It doesn't mean any data like that. It doesn't mean anything. I mean, it, you hear it and you're like, that's awful, but Tragic. you're like, it's detached. Mm-hmm. Like you can't grasp, you know, that many people like you just can't, mm-hmm. but seeing a person in front of you, like I know, I understand what she went through and there's X number others who are going through similar or even worse. Right. You're like, and here's a tangible thing that I can do to contribute to fix it. And, and like, exactly. And you mentioned the stats and stats are important. Like th- those numbers mean something sure. if there's a face to the, to those numbers. And so what I did was I had, I had th- that person tell her story and then, and then there was, there were stats that all of a sudden had a face. And I think that was the power of the message in general, because detached from humanity, those are just numbers, but you attach a face to the number of trafficked individuals and their story. And all of a sudden that number is enormous and you feel the injustice of it. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So Lane, what can we apply from that? What can we take from that? Because I think there's a lot that, I mean, that just some best practices to follow of, I mean, you need to humanize your brand. You, there needs to be a person that someone can see and understand and relate to. Mm-hmm. I think that's, that's an important one. Mm-hmm. And then having some why of, you know, what, what's the, because again, you, you aren't the hero. It's you're, you're guiding your customer, your, your donors or whoever uh, you're trying to reach mm-hmm. in towards making a decision. So how can we, how can people leverage that in you know the typical small business scenario? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. And it, that's actually probably the question because at the end of it, you have a goal and the goal is to build a list, to raise funds, to sell a product. You know what I mean? Like there's an end goal and, and <laughs> so there has to be an ask at some point. And that's the big, that's the big, that's hard for people um, because they either are too focused on asking for the sell, the sale to asking for the donation or the sign up to your list. They're, like that, that is the goal in their mindset. Therefore, they communicate that as the number one priority. So this is, this is, it's, it's reversed. You need to communicate their win, their success their whatever they're looking for their problem that that needs to be solved is your number one priority and then once that's been established the ask isn't even necessary because they're like here's my money i want to do this i'm in i want to look i want to look stronger i want to feel better i want my hair to be better i want my 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 relationships to be better you know that like they 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 don't the, the ask is is secondary be, because um they already like you don't even have to do the ask i mean you will do the ask if you're a good marketer that's important i'm not saying don't do it but i'm right. saying the ask is already done if you've found your person and you've communicated clearly to that person yeah it's super and qualified. they have the problem and they have the problem that you're solving yeah. exactly alex from Ozzy, uh I heard him say pretty recently that the longer you can delay the ask, the bigger it can be. Or that was kind of the yes. core thing of a lot of people are like the first thing they do is like, buy my thing. Or like, mm-hmm. we have a sale, buy it now. Here's a promotion. And mm-hmm. like trying to incentivize through urgency or scarcity or discount. And like you can maybe get some, like some subset of customers will mm-hmm. go for that. But the vast majority are like, I don't need that right now. Like I don't, I wouldn't buy it at full price. I don't care if it's half off. Like I still don't need it or want it. Mm-hmm. But if you introduce like a way to relate, like showing, I understand your problem. There's someone experiencing it or someone who has solved it and is now offering the solution to you. You relate to it. They tell you why it matters and the transformation that's going to happen. And then you're at a point where like, okay, they understand me. They, it seems like, like I could fix whatever pain I'm facing. Like, like you said, wanting to look better, or be stronger. Like <laughs> I can't go to the gym consistently on my own. So like this trainer guy seems pretty legit. And then they ask, oh, I can, there's a spot open to work with them. 
well, now it's just like the transaction is now the secondary thing. Mm-hmm. Transactions come after transformation. Yep. Yep. You establish that trust, becoming real, becoming human, becoming like a legit op- option. And, and then, and then the ask is like a done deal because that's a highly qualified buyer lead or whatever at that point. Yeah. So when you tie this into, you know, the typical business, most are not, most small business owners are not thrilled at the prospect of like being the face of their business. Mm -hmm. And I, that's a big part of why the show exists and trying to inform like, this is why it matters. This is, you know, different ways that you can approach it. What are your thoughts around I mean, it being the owner, you know, the the head of an organization uh, who maybe wants to have someone else step in to do right. it, you know, some of their leadership or their kid or, or hiring an actor. How do you handle that? Well, you know, obviously there are large corporations where there's like, you know, 2000 employees or whatever. Like that's one thing to not be the head and not be the, the face. Um, but whenever, so, so here, here's an example that I'll use for my own business. You know, I went through dozens of names for my corporation, for my, you know, for my company that I wanted to to do. And I was like, Oh, we could be, this is a cool sounding. I'll make up this, I'll blend these two Latin words and make it into this nothing word that then becomes a brand. But you know, like there's so many different things. And, and at the end of the day, I was like, okay, here's the deal. People are going to want me to tell their story. They're going to want to to entrust me with their information and to communicate their idea. Okay, I'm going to name it after myself, which was like, it was kind of a thing. Like I had a hard time with it a little. I'll, just, I'll just be honest. I was like, I mean, I guess, I mean, you know, what What if? Anyway, and, and the reason I did that was was not because I've got this big ego that I need to, I need this stroke every time I look at my web domain. <laughs> I like, <laughs> like, I, you know, I've, I've, life is, life has kicked my butt enough for me to be like, okay, I'm, I don't need, I don't need this. <laughs> um, but the reason I did that was because exactly like you said, it's, it's got, I, I knew that I was going to be the one communicating the ideas most of the time. And I'm not always the one that's behind the camera or doing this or that. Like, you know, I, I hire crew and, and, and teams to come in and, and, and we do this, but I am the one that is communicating with the higher ups and, making sure that they are getting what they want. And, and that's important to me because this is a, this is a hard industry. Like, I mean, media production in general is, they say that it's not saturated, but it is saturated in some, some degree. The fact that everybody is walking around with a 4k cinematic, you know, piece of equipment in their pocket everywhere. Um, you know, like it kind of is. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and so having having a, a face and and being able to communicate who you are where you're going to take them with your with whatever you're going to do i think it's super it, it's it's just mandatory these days and i'm not saying you, yeah. you you have to name your company after yourself that's not what i'm saying but i'm, I'm just saying right. being the face and especially in a small company like mine um it's just important and because that's who who's going to be, you know, answering the questions and being involved on the day to day. Yeah. A a good number of people that will listen to this are generally going to be smaller business owners, you know, maybe a team of 10 or 20. Uh, Often they're, you know, even smaller. It might just be them, you know, maybe an assistant, maybe a part-time person uh, or specialized like outsourced help. So it kind of has to be them. And I think you're you're right of when you're trying to lean into, well, I'm a business, I'm this, you know, this entity, that's fine. But people connect with humans mm-hmm. and they like they will relate to a person much more than your branding. <laughs> and, yeah. Which is the stuff that we all stress over when we first start. Like, are my brand colors really going to represent the what I want to put out in the world? I'm like, nah, don't worry about that. <laughs> you get, that'll, because, that'll take don't, care of itself like, later. Yeah, like, don't. No <laughs> one's like going to weigh you against a competitor of like, I like this blue way better than their red. I'm like, 
nobody's going to do that. I promise. Right. But it comes down to how are you connecting with other people? And I think story is the framework that most of us can learn, especially when we are in a competitive industry, because Mm -hmm. you can now distinguish yourself from everyone else who does video production, but you have the way that Jonathan Mills does it. Right. And people can identify that and come to you for it. And when you communicate it well, it's often the thing that sets you apart. Right. No, and that's totally true. And and there's story in everything too. That was the other point I was I wanted to bring is there's always a story. Um, like we were talking about real estate earlier, and and I don't just like just slap together a whole bunch of cool cinematic moves with my camera. Like I I make it mean something. Like as if you are entering that home and you want it to be yours. And 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 what would you do first? And how would you how would you walk through that house? And what would you look at? And what would draw your attention and capture you? And, 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 you know, it, it unfolds until the end where you're like, this house is awesome. And, or, or, you know, uh, I, I do private jets too. It's the same thing. It's like, like, you know, most people don't even think that they could, you know, most people can't afford a $10 million jet. Like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying everybody's like rolling like that, but everybody likes to think about it. And everybody likes to watch it and everybody likes to, to imagine themselves. So why not just take that, that tendency and, and put a visual to it so that you can see, oh man, this dude in a slick looking suit just walked up to this $10 million private jet. He's probably off to like Bali or something sweet. You know what I mean? Like you can fill in the blanks and that's how we sell jets. You know, that's, you, you tell the story and, and it's, 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 there's a story in everything whether you're talking about a, a a doctor's office and and you need to you know you need to let the potential client know like you're going to walk in they'll be organized they'll be friendly they'll make you feel special and important they'll get to your your problem with um a, you know in a timely fashion and they're going to they're going to display excellence on your behalf so that you can move on with your life because nobody wants to spend time in the doctor's office. You know what I mean? Like, like that's a story. And, and it, it does, it just, it means something. Every little camera movement, every little piece, every little piece of B-roll, all the audio, it all means something. And it should be driving that forward to the end goal of saying, yes, I want what you have. Let's do this thing. So that's it in a nutshell. (laughs) Absolutely. And, Something I think one of the most important stories is the one that others people tell about us Mm -hmm. or the, the story that other people tell about us. And most of the time what that manifests as is referrals, Mm -hmm. you know, word of mouth advertising and the challenging and somewhat depressing piece is that a lot of people don't really tell that story very well. Yeah. It's a very you know linear, small piece of it from their experience that might not really tell the full story. Mm-hmm. So when you get to get really clear on what you do and who you do it for and communicate that well, it makes it even easier for other people to share that with others. Yep. You know, if it's someone gets you know, 10 seconds on your website, mm-hmm. can they tell someone else what you do? If they watch one video of yours, do they know what you do? Right. And if they don't know that, then it isn't clear enough. Yep. And so you need to cut all the fat and get down to the bare bones of what you do and who you're looking for, like, and what you can do for them and and how they can win by, you know, whatever service, product, opportunity, whatever you have is going to afford them. Um, Yeah. I don't know how much time we have left. I was going to tell one more story. Go for it. So I've got um, a client who is a, they're a staging company and um, it's quickly growing. Like it's, I imagine that it will become a, a nationally recognized brand within the next five years, most likely. And um, one of the things I did was create a brand message video for them right off the bat, like just got started. This is what you are. You've, you've rebranded this company. You're ready to launch as this new entity let's go. And, and the first thing we did is we, we got builders, um, in front of the camera who had worked with this company 
and and we told the story. We let them tell the story on behalf of the the company, this faceless entity that's like a corporation, and that builder had a problem. They needed they needed a, a house that they just built ready for the parade of homes, and they needed it yesterday, and their budget was this big, but they wanted it to look this big. What are you gonna do? And we told the story. And that story keeps getting repeated and repeated and repeated. And so like, it, it's a staging company. They put furniture in houses. <laughs> it's like not sexy. It's not a jet. It's like a couch on their living room floor. You know what I mean? But at the end of that, whenever that builder finished telling about how awesome this experience was, everybody's like, man, I need to stage my house to sell it. You know what I mean? It, it, it was just one of those magical moments that the other person told the story and we didn't even have to do any of the work. It was just, it unfolded before us because it was social proof that it worked for somebody else. So it's been a good, it's been a great campaign for them. Yeah, I bet. Because it takes something very, I mean, that in my mind just sounds like an extra expense. Uh -huh. Or like, why would I pay? I don't know what even would be an estimate. But I mean, I, I imagine not, you know, a few hundred dollars. You're probably paying a decent amount. It's several to thousand. Have yeah. Come, <laughs> yeah, several thousand dollars to come have someone do this. Like, why would I do that? It doesn't make any sense. But it's when you, I mean, you can see the difference in listings of if you see something like that looks amazing. Mm-hmm. Like it, I could see that being my house. Like I would want to live there. Right. It's hard to do that with empty rooms. Right. And you can tell that, you know, like you can, you can give all the stats of like, you know, if you list your house without furnishing, it's going to go in this many amounts of days and you know, all this, that's fine. That's great. That that's information that's valuable if it means something and it means something whenever a builder is like, I saved a hundred thousand dollars last year because I went with this staging company instead of this other guy that talks, man. Businesses are like, I will save a hundred thousand dollars if I, you know, this is, this is what I'm doing now. Like it, you know, it, it just, it inspires, um, yeah, it inspires trust and it causes people to take action. Yeah. Communicating in a people, you know, communicating in a way that people want to listen. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Well, Jonathan, thank you so much for coming on. This was a lot of fun for everyone who tuned into this, watched it. It would mean the world to me. If you'd leave a review, wherever you're listening to it, we're on Spotify, on Apple, Alexa, Stitcher, all the places. So if you leave a review, that would be awesome. If you listen or watch on YouTube, I would love if you drop a comment of what do you want to hear in future episodes? Where are you getting stuck? What's confusing? What can we cover to help you take advantage of storytelling and using video to grow your business and your impact? Uh, Jonathan, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, man. And I, I will see you. I will, we'll see you in the next one. Awesome, man. Thank you so much for watching this episode of CEOs on Video. I hope you got something valuable from it. If you liked this episode of CEOs on Video, be sure to let us know by giving us a follow. Leave us a rating on Apple Music. It would mean the world to us. So let us know what you like, what you didn't. And if there's anything that we can do to help you, be sure to reach out. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you on the next one.